Today, we're focusing on our psychic abilities and the ways that you can turn yours up. So today, we're going to be giving you some really easy guidance to be able to open up to seeing things like auras, to reading tarot cards, to tapping into other people's energy, and also be able to possibly see your future and that of others. So if you're wanting that and more, please click the subscribe button below, click the bell so that you're notified. And yeah, let's get this party started. Fantastic. This is something that I think a lot of people want to tap into, but they want a shortcut. <laughs> you know, they don't want to, they don't want to spend the time to really learn about it. They want to watch this video and then be able to like, I don't know, go look in a crystal ball and see everything. So what, what is something, what is a realistic expectation do you think for somebody who really is interested in this, you know, what type of investment of time and attention are they going to really have to make in order to make the shift so that they can do things like have the, the meaning of their tarot cards or tapping into people's energies, like you said, you know, what do you think that people really need to be prepared to do in order to make this work before we tell them anything to do? What kind of mindset do you think they need to bring to it? Yeah, so when you're coming into wanting to develop your psychic abilities, really it's something that you're going to want to do every single day. It's kind of like learning a new language. 15 minutes a day really helps you to expand on your vocabulary and grow in that way. Same with becoming more psychic, at least 15 minutes a day of some of the things I'm going to tell you about in this video, um, just to help your third eye and your mind, your pineal gland to just expand and open in a way that is really beneficial for you. So, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So, and I love that you said 15 minutes a day. My daughter and I are actually doing um, 15 minute a day French right now. So, um, cause she wanted to learn French. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> That's, <really> neat. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> um, so yeah. So, um, all right. So when people, what I would tell people is that they really need to focus on the why, why do they want to do this? Do you want to do this so that you can become more powerful? Do you want to do it so that you can benefit others? Do you want to do it so, um, so that the world is a, a, a brighter, more peaceful place? Because I believe with anything that we do, tapping into the why really helps us to connect to the truth of the situation. Um, I will say if, if you're wanting to tap into this so that you can control someone or so that you can influence their actions in some way. Um, big red flag, uh, back up. Cause that's not what this is for. Right. I mean, a lot of people say, you know, I want to manifest my ex back and I want to make this person come back to me or, you know, my partner or my coworker or whatever acts in this certain way. And I'd like them to do this other thing. That's really not what this is for. So if that's what you want to use it for, I would say, uh, put it in reverse, back it up. Let's find, let's find a new motivation because that's just not healthy. Yeah. And I was going to say with those types of situations, um, just being more open intuitively, you can heal it, but it's from the inside. Like you kind of know exactly whether you're supposed to be with that person, most likely no. And so you're kind of like, cool, I can see a better future. I'm going to be moving on. Or if you're in a relationship that you kind of can't get out of at work, um, you see how you can really embrace change or you have different actions that you intuitively know will make things easier. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that the moving on is really hard for a lot of people because they, they see these ideals that they want in their life and they're like, no, but I want this. But if you can, if you can set the intention to have those values and then release all of the, the struggle, then that will bring um, just fresh air, spiritual fresh air. Yeah. into into your life and i really think that that is the first step to increasing our psychic abilities is that word that we've talked about so many times allowing yeah surrender and allow don't ask how just allow <laughs> i love it when you say that <laughs> yeah so how how can somebody shift into that allowing mindset yeah so three posts that you can do just these little things one, number one, make sure that every day, maybe you wake up, it's the first thing you do, I want you to just focus on your breathing. 
um, that, that can just be a little exercise you do, whether you wake up every day and you do that, or you go to bed and you do that. That's just kind of getting your energy to ground. I know we have a Kundalini video with some breathing exercises that you could use. So if you want to try that, you can, if not just focus on long, deep breathing and just imagine your energy, just kind of being in your body, maybe your feet are on the ground. You just feel really grounded because when we're open intuitively, it's great to be up in the ether. It's great to be connected, but you also really need to be here. You really need to be present in order to feel into what is meant to happen or what you're visualizing, feeling, whatever. There's so many different psychic abilities, which we can go over another video. Yeah. I think that that's really important though, you, that you said that it's really great to be on that high flying disc, to be, to be up high, but you need to be grounded. That's why we're here is to be grounded and to be connected to the earth. Otherwise, why are we in this human experience? So I think that the place where a lot of people go wrong with that thought is they either think it's up here or it's grounding to the earth and it's not. Why do you think that we're built long? <laughs> we're built to reach in both directions. Yeah. We are straight up and down animals and we do have our, our third eye. We do have our crown and they reach up and out. And then our, our other chakras, obviously the, the primary channel in a channel form, it, none of this is by chance. You have all these signs all around you. So you can reach up and down at one time. I know Pixie, you're, you're a yoga instructor and you know, when you, when you stand in mountain pose, that's what you're doing is you're reaching up and down. And I really think that I love that you said, focus on your breathing first thing in the morning. And what I do is I actually do, I, I visualize myself though. I'm laying flat. I lay flat on my back and I do breathe. Uh, I do deep breathing, but I visualize myself reaching to the sky and to the ground and watching my energy expand the length of my body. And I do that before I even put my feet on the ground. Yeah. So that's actually, I was going to say something that I teach my priestesses is that you are a bridge. You are like, you're saying that connection up and that connection to the earth. And that's a perfect breath to use that you, you use every morning is to really inhale, maybe visualize yourself connecting to the universe, bring that energy back in, connect it down to the earth. And honestly, bringing both and bringing it to your heart space and expanding, that'll lead me to my last point. But yeah, just bringing that energy in to really feel and be intuitive from the heart space, I feel is really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and then from a mindset space, the thing that I tell all of our clients to, to say to themselves, very first thing is today is a great day to have a great day. Deciding that you want to be that channel of positivity, regardless of circumstances, you know, a mountain doesn't stand any any shorter because of what's going on around it. It, you know, stands tall and, and that's, that's really what we are. We are the, the, the mountain connection. Yes. Oh, I love that. Oh, anyway, let me let's stay focused. <laughs> so the next one, the next one that actually is a great book that I use and I can show it in a minute, but is visualization, just visualizing. And if you're not the best at visualizing, feeling, or maybe you're really good at auditory, just taking time with the senses that you feel good at first. Um, and then later you can take time with the senses that you're a little bit like, okay, I need more practice. So let me just give an example. So if you are very kinesthetic, like I am, so you like movement, you like to visualize, I will actually take my hands. And I know probably a lot of you practice or have had Reiki and I'm, I'll close my eyes and I'll just start to visualize a ball of light in between my hands. And I try to feel it. So as my hands are moving, the energy is growing and expanding until I could make a huge bubble that I could step into. Um, or I'm going to visualize, you know, that job or that connection or that future that I'm wanting every single day. Um, another thing, again, if you're not really good with the visualization portion, you could just sit in a meditation and just stay open to what you're meant to hear from the universe. I'm very auditory. So I love doing that and just getting messages or guidance. And you might find that, oh, wow, I'm actually connected to these angels or this, these star people or whatever comes through. Um, and then one last thing for that, like getting some practice in, even just sitting out in nature and just 
listening to sounds or smelling the smells or when you're eating, just like really being present with the tastes, the more you can get into your senses, the more you're going to develop these abilities. I love spending time outside with my eyes closed. I mean, of course I love spending time outside with my eyes open, but when you close your eyes and you, you challenge, I mean, I think that a lot of us rely on our eyes in a bit of um, a crutch sort of way. Yep. Like, you know, everything that I can take in is going to be taken in here. But when you allow that rest to happen for your optic nerve, your other senses kind of tingle and come alive a little bit more. And you do recognize things that you wouldn't recognize before. And, and that's not just a physical thing that really is tapping into that psychic power. And one thing that you said really close to the beginning of this video is, um, you know, people want to tap into each other's energy and, the best way I believe really to tap into other people's energy is by having your open channel, being open, but allowing that to enter through different senses. Mm -hmm. We just, I think, rely on this too much. And when we're relying on our eyes too much, we miss other things. Yes, 100%. Yeah, you can be a lot more intuitive by opening up your senses and really practicing that way. Um, the last thing, just kind of like touching into like you just said, reading other people or reading other people's energies is just to be energetically hygienic and having a little bit of protection. So as we talked about in the beginning of that beautiful breath that you could bring in from the universe down to the earth, connecting you, um, if you want to visualize at the same time, this energy coming in through your crown and this energy coming up from the earth and meeting at your heart space. And then just watching that energy surround you in a beautiful bubble of protection, really visualizing your protective bubble and acknowledging what you are allowing in your sphere and what you're not will help you on your journey so that for some people, they believe that you might pick up other energies or what have you, but really it's just kind of keeping you and your energy in alignment. Um, and then if you are doing things like reading other people's energies, making sure that you again are being energetically hygienic using sage or using some type of cleansing tool, maybe an Epsom salt bath, just to like release and come back to self. So. Absolutely. I love, I, I take Epsom salt baths daily. I love it. It's part of my evening routine with essential oils and um, also chimes are a beautiful cleansing. The, the vibration from chimes are cleansing for your energy as well. If you allow them to be. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's fantastic. All right. Well, if this video has been interesting to you of help at all, give us a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please do make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the little bell. So you'll know the next time we drop a Woo Woo Wednesday video to help you live a more connected, intuitive life.